Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar interview today. I'm Francis Healy from Global Net 21 and Infill Voices and this is one of the many webinars we do where we discuss major issues. And this is a rather special one because we're going to interview Ferial Clark today and she's uh, the MP for Enfield North, a fairly new MP, she only got elected in December. And we're going to talk to her about how she's coping with this pandemic in terms of her job and how it's affects her and how it might make her rethink some things about what Parliament does and I think it will be really really interesting. So thank you for joining us Ferial and it's great that, that you're here. Um, maybe I could ask you a rather silly question that because I'm sure lots of people know you but for those who don't maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself before you were an MP. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for inviting me uh, tonight, Francis. I really appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm relatively new to Parliament, um, having been elected in December. Uh, but prior to that, I used to be a councillor in a neighbouring borough in North London, where I was the deputy mayor, deputy leader. Um, and I was also the cabinet member for health and social care, uh, but prior to that, I had spent um, eight years as the lead member on transport and environment and, and, and had done a lot of campaigning on, um, on, on environment and sustainable transport, uh, not just in for North London, but London wide. I served on the uh, London councils, which is a body that brings together all of the London boroughs. Um, so I was the vice chair of the Transport and Environment Committee there uh, for a number of years. Um, so, yeah, and I, I spent 14 years in local government uh, before I stood for uh, before I stood for Parliament, but before that, before, well, actually, I was I was um, I was I was a cabinet. I was a full time a councillor for ten years, but I was also but when in two thousand and six when I first got elected, I was still working as a, a biomedical scientist. So my background is actually in pathology. Um, so, so yeah, well, I moved from uh, from NHS into local government into now Parliament. Okay, so, so it seems like you've led several lives already, um, <laughs> and now now you're in Parliament, and and you know you 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 went into Parliament in the beginning of this year. What was your feeling when you first went in? I mean, was it like Winston Churchill? You were overcome with the awe and the theatre of the place, or was it like one of your predecessors, Nick de Bois, who thought after two weeks, oh my God, I've made the biggest mistake in my life. I can't influence anything here how did you feel i think um honestly it was some parts of it um were quite overwhelming um i think you can't help but be overwhelmed by the you know the historic building walking through those corridors um, and you know, going into the in, in the, the chamber, it is it is a fantastic, and amazing place. Um, so I found that part quite um, overwhelming. Um, I found uh, there it, it, it can be an incredibly lonely place um, because everyone has everyone's patch, everyone's area is completely different. Whilst you are a part of a political party and you have uh, maybe you know one joint meeting uh, once a week, um, everyone's in different parts of the palace. So my, 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 where I am, well, we didn't have an office to start off with for the first month. So about 26 of us were sharing this tiny room and just to take turns and going onto the computers until they sorted out our offices. Um, but you can spend your time just in your office and not seeing anyone else. So it can be lonely. And so you have to make a real effort to go out there and to speak to, uh, to, to other MPs. And, and if you do, if you don't, if you didn't go into the tea room and didn't bump into MPs, members of the opposition parties, the only time you'll see them possibly will be in the chamber, where is that whole theatrical, you know, the theatre where everyone's shouting and jeering. Um, so I made a real effort to uh, speak to people because I'm, I'm a sociable person I like talking to people so whether it was members of the Tory party or Lib Dems or SNPs I try to make try to speak to people get to know people really to because I think if you don't get to know people it's really difficult to understand a place 
Um, and Parliament had been, prior to me going in there, it'd been a very weird Parliament, five years of just, four years of just uh, Brexit. So it'd been an odd Parliament. So I made the effort to get to know people. Um, did I, I, I did, I felt, I, I, I made sure I got my, um, so the way it works, if you don't, you know, you have to get your maiden speech done before you can speak in a debate or ask a question. So I was very keen to get my speech done. Um, and once I got my speech done, I felt, um, I felt, I felt quite overwhelmed, like being able to stand up and, and to talk and represent uh, the issues in Enfield. I thought I, I felt quite overwhelmed actually about that. I don't know, you know, how much difference that will make. Um, is that's another thing, but um, it, it is, it, of course, it's different to be in, you know, where, in, in an environment where I was in, you know, as a councillor in a local authority where we were in control. Yeah. So I, it's very different to that. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually remember you turning up to a meeting on community safety on the day you made your maiden speech, which I thought was, was absolutely amazing because most MPs stick around to hear what other MPs think of their maiden speech, but you you came up. You said you were lonely, but you could never have imagined that three months down the line you were going to be even more lonely because you were going to be locked down because of the COVID-19 crisis. Now, when that hit you, you know, you've just come into Parliament, you wanted to engage, you wanted to meet, know all these MPs and suddenly this hit you. How did you react to that? How did you feel about that? It's, it's been, it's been, it's, it's incredible. It's been, um, it's been a bizarre experience uh, because so we went into Parliament. We had a few, well, a week and a half after that, it was Christmas holidays. So, you know, managed to put my bag down, pick up a pass, um, get my maiden speech out of the way. I think, did I? Yeah. I know, I did it in January, actually. Um, so I, you know, get my, managed to, I didn't even have an office. And then January, when we came back, we had quite a, few, quite a lot of, uh, Brexit vote, so the European withdrawal bill uh, vote, and we, there was another recess. And before I could, you know, I was in the process of uh, setting up my office. So I was in the process of like recruiting caseworkers, researchers, and office manager. I was trying to set up my office and order equipment. Before I could complete that, we went into lockdown. So I had, I had, I did, and thank God, I did manage to. I had I had uh, my caseworkers and my team, most of my team in place, but um, majority of my team hadn't actually worked together. They hadn't seen each other in real life, so they ended up. Um, so they they've, they've they're working virtually now. Um, it's made it feels it is definitely it's it's very lonely. Um, but the you know you have to quickly really quickly adapt so normally what you would do as a new mp you would uh, once you get elected you'll spend some time going around meeting the organizations getting your you know getting your name you know yourself introduced to schools and um to like, like you know charities and you get to you know then you start working on issues um and after a couple of surgeries, I, you know, it was, it was really, it was really difficult in that you were dealing with issues. I mean, it, I would say the kind of issues that I was dealing with before the pandemic and since the pandemic have completely changed. Um, but it is a much lonelier world. You do, you don't only have yourself and uh, to think about, but you have a team of people who are having to deal with some really complex and really sad and um, some, you know, real, real, really scary issues. And I do, you know, I have to constantly, you know, constantly think about their well-being as well. Was, and it's trying to work as a team as well. It's, it's, it's a, it's definitely been a weird, weird period of, of Parliament. A weird time to go into Parliament, well, I would say. I'm sure, it, I'm sure it has. But I was going to ask you about what you were just talking about, your casework. I mean, you know, casework is a, a lot more important now than it was three decades ago for an MP, and they get a lot more done. Now, you know, how do you do your casework when you can't see people face to face? And you said it's changed a lot too because of the pandemic. Maybe you could tell us how it's changed. 
Yeah, so, um, and then, and I, and, and I feel really sad that I can't meet uh, the cons- my constituent face to face and pick up their casework. Um, so at the moment, I'm picking up casework uh, so people can call um, and leave a message. We'll pick it up via that, or they can email us. Um, and you know, there's the odd uh, casework over Twitter that I pick up as well that I deal with, and when someone's not, you know. If they've not emailed us um but you know so we had we had uh quite a lot of you know it was uh, a lot of say domestic housing issues um there was some benefits issues that i was dealing with but it's just it was it was very varied so it will be repairs it will be damp it will be you know it'll be overcrowding those are the kind of cases that i was dealing with that made up quite a chunk of my casework at the first couple of weeks uh, well the first four or five weeks I was an MP um, but with COVID um, so many people uh, have been affected whether they have been uh, they have they, they've been furloughed or they've, they've had to go on to benefits and then whether there are businesses um, uh, whether they're self-employed, so imagine you—we know, have thousands of people who are self-employed in Enfield. Who, when the first, you know, when the when the chancellor announced his financial package, weren't covered by the by the uh, by the uh, financial office. So, uh, but it has that has changed since. But so it it was it, it so you've got a lot of and and people who needed immediate help because it's. If you can't, you know, if you can't operate a business, there's no money coming in. You've got, you know, you've got a, if you, they've got families, you can not so much the mortgage or the rent that, that, that was, you know, that you could resolve that, but being able to buy food. Um, but also people who were shielding, who, for whatever reason, the government's um, databases didn't work and weren't getting, they hadn't been received their shielding letters, so either been uh, pressured into going to work uh, or weren't able to, you know, the simple things like early days, people who were severely ill, who were clinically vulnerable, who hadn't received their uh, shielding letter, were not able to get a priority um, slot with the food delivery with the supermarkets. So, you know, emailing you know, at supermarkets on a daily basis, <laughs> a number of times trying to get them. And it's true, you know, and it's, you're constantly pushing them because you, without that, you know, that piece of paper, that email from government saying you are, are you are shielded, they weren't able to, you know, they were, and they were still vulnerable. They were still like either, you know, I don't know, receiving chemo or had a real serious illness that meant that couldn't go out. So, it's so it's been more about the impact the casework has been about people who are severely impacted as a result of uh, the pandemic so that's businesses that's that's employees that's vulnerable people and i've even had a couple of emails from students young students who are worried about predictive um, grades <laughs> who feel that it is, I mean, I do, I, my heart goes out to them. I mean, I, 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 I did, I was the kind of person who was just very much better at doing, um, I did really well last minute in, in uh, exams and, you know, sometimes um, maybe my predictive grades wouldn't have been as good as what I got at the end. So you've got, there are lots of, you know, there are lots of, variety of issues but so, definitely the nature has changed and the volume has absolutely changed well i and, you, and you've got a team who've obviously got to know that got to know each other pretty well and having to respond but what about your work in parliament i mean you you were elected there to scrutinize to legislate when I mean, you're not in government but there's private members bills 10 minute rules and so on i mean how you, I mean, how do you cope with that? Because you can't do that anymore. I mean, the, the scrutiny function seems to have gone. The legislative, legislative function, too, has been sort of diminished. I mean, how do you respond to that? Yeah. Um, so um, in terms of, so I still try to, so, my, my, I'll, so I'll come back to Parliament in a second. So in terms of my constituency work and my meetings with, 
uh, with, whether it's the police, whether it's the NHS, whether it's the local authority. So I'm still doing those meetings and do you know, are you know, holding those organisations and authorities to account over Zoom meetings. So that's that we very quickly established that. Um, but Parliament was a little slow in in in, in adapting um, to 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 our new circumstances so we the part as you remember francis parliament went into recess a week earlier so we had recess coming up um april recess so we went into recess a week earlier and it gave parliament uh, an extra week so it was about three weeks to prepare um so we we weren't able to go in my staff weren't able to go in um, they were having to, I was, you know, they were having to work from their own personal equipment for a number of weeks. Um, but Parliament did finally adapt. We were able to uh, vote on uh, issues, on, on, on legislation. So they finally managed to put online, uh, they established online voting. We had, we were able, they very quickly established the select committee. So the committees where you hold um, uh, authorities, so, you know, the, the ministers to account, it's a scrutiny, fun, serves as a scrutiny function. So those committees were very quickly established and they were having their meetings via Zoom and Teams. Um, and that seems to be working really well. Um, and then my, my only, um, Contention, the only, the only part that I've not been very happy with is the way that uh, the parliament operates. So um, to be able to take part, so in, when I was in parliament, I, before the lockdown, um, from say, I guess it was like last, well, it was, we didn't do very much, so there wasn't very much setting in December, but from January to the point we shut down in March, I'd spoken eight times, um, but, since I've since the since the lockdown and the new regime, I've only managed to ask two questions, and that is because of the system that has been set up. So you well, have. I was to going to ask you about that actually. That, that I mean, you say you spoke eight times. You were there. You, you know, we saw you on the television, and you know, before you were elected, when, when Brexit was on, we saw MPs on all the time. It was exhausting people. And now you see them hardly at all. Do you ever think that people might think we can do without you? I know. I think, I think you still, there are still issues and matters that, um, uh, that need to be dealt with at, uh, like we still need to legislate. We still, you know, um, there, there is still, I think there is whether, um, that there are still issues that only your, your member of parliament, and consult can resolve and there are still legislation being passed as issues being dealt with um my only my only contention is that so i've had to adapt the way i work so whilst i might not be selected to speak so once upon a time i would just turn up and sit in uh the chamber um and i was you know and then there is there is a hierarchy if you're a chair of a committee select committee or if you're a former minister for a, that specific area you will always be prioritized over newbies like myself and um, but i was happy to sit till midnight to wait for my turn because i was willing to you know was willing to wait for enfield so i did i did do that but now because of the um, because of slim slim down operation, the debate times are shorter. You have to enter a ballot. It's a bit like a lottery a shuffle. If you get selected, and then there's an order that you're put into. And I've not been. And because my other, there are many new MPs who've not got to speak at all, so they get prioritised over me because I've managed to speak before. But as I said, I I I you know that doesn't mean I'm not. Uh, still pushing my points I put in I submit written questions to the ministers to get a response I write to them and I've written hundreds of emails letters to ministers because um, as I said the casework uh, as load has very much been high um, but it was and and the um, like everyone else in the country parliament had finally managed to change and adapt and we were able to vote online as it was, I'm not saying it's something that we should do going forward all the time, but it was available. So, and as the government had said, you know, if you can work from home, 
you should. So, you know, you say, you know, it's changed a lot, but has that made you think and other MPs think, maybe you don't contact other MPs as much as you used to, but has it made you rethink what Parliament should do? Has it made you think it's a bit old fashioned and online voting is probably the way to do it now and some of the traditions have to go, that you can work in a different way, you've shown that you can. Has that made you think about changing Parliament, reforming Parliament? Oh, I, I certainly think a lot of resistance that was in Parliament that I hear about. I mean, don't forget, I'm new, but from what I hear, when I've, from what I've spoken to colleagues about, um, there, is, is, there is resistance to change. And I think this has forced the Parliament and a lot of people who are quite traditionalist um, has made them think that we can, it can work without... Um, I think it's all about there is there is a, there is an amazing it's beautiful there are beautiful traditions um, in a parliament um, and I think quite a lot of them are uh, nice and should be should be kept um, and the way the parliament operates the way um, I, I I always think I always find the the interventions quite interesting the way you have to like lift your hands up and and point to your right honorable member before you know there, there are lots of traditions there's lots of ways and you have to answer there are lots of traditions i think you absolutely it makes the part you know british parliament the british parliament and we should absolutely be kept but absolutely i think the being forced into working in different way uh, would mean that they would parliament will be will have to be less resistant to uh, change, um, I'm, I'm, I was still, I was very upset that, um, I was quite happy to go back to Parliament. I mean, it's a bit pointless if you ask me because I, I go to Parliament, even if I'm not selected, I sit there and do my meetings from my office on my own and then come back home. Whereas I can still be doing that work at home and not lose the hour and uh, well, two hours I run back back there and uh, there and back. Um, but it, it did mean that quite a lot, quite a lot of MPs who were um, shielding, who were either, who have underlying conditions or who were looking after vulnerable partners or uh, they were carers, um, were not able to take part. And I think in, in you know, whilst we have, absolutely we have, we have, we have actually, we have shown that we can work remotely, that we can vote remotely um, to say that they couldn't. I mean, the government did they, the following day change its mind and did make that um, offer but it's still not good enough. It's still a proxy vote as opposed to just being able to vote online. They, well, they might now have to remake the play, this house that was made during the time of, uh, you know, the Callaghan government, which looked at the Whip's office. And if we did it in time of the COVID-19 crisis, it would be a very different play. Um, I mean, has, has um, also, I mean, have you, have you felt that because COVID has taken over so much, that some major, major issues, social care, climate, change transition to the EU and so on it's taken a back seat and and that suffered and maybe the black matters the black matters black lives matter issue George Floyd's death has made people realize that the world is still out there with all its problems I, I certainly believe that COVID has um, has highlighted the impact of 10 years of austerity it absolutely has. Um, I think we, you know, realizing uh, who actually makes this country uh, work, who, 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 who has, who makes the, you know, the, the biggest sacrifices. Um, I think it's shown a light on a huge section of our society that we've all far too often completely forgotten um, and not, 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 uh, not, um, not appreciate it so our social workers um and i think it has uh, i think some of the i don't i i personally and i hope it will but i don't think the government will can can go forward uh continuing to ignore uh the the need in our in our public services so the need to completely transform social care um and the fact that social workers are paid uh, not paid a fair wage in most cases. Um, 
I think it, it has highlighted the inequality in our society. You look at the buses, so a lot of those who can work from home are working, which is great. But when you look at the buses in the morning, the buses are still packed in the morning with people who are going out to, uh, who are uh, care workers, who are security guards, who are caretakers, um, people who are still working in the front lines and, and, and I still um, having to work during this uh, pandemic, bus drivers. Um, so I think it has highlighted the inequalities. And I think when, you know, people losing their jobs, I mean, I know my, my own husband has had to take a, a pay cut, but it's minimal. So, you know, him having to take 20% pay cut, it doesn't affect our family that much. But there are people who've been uh, furloughed, people who weren't, there were, there were people in society, in our society, who weren't eligible for uh, sick pay. That was the that was the issue. Um, I think yes, and I think and and uh, so that it has highlighted issues within our society. Um, it's it's it it's it will you know and hopefully government will take notice of it. But it's highlighted the inequalities, and I think Black Lives Matters um, movement at the moment is is also um shining a light on uh, because what we've also seen is that uh, throughout this pandemic we've seen which which part of our society which part of our community is worst off who's affected the most and looking seeing the report that came out from public health england which shows that uh, black asian minority ethnic people are mo more affected most affected than than the wider community is, is something and and black lives matter has highlighted that you know we have we have issues in our society with the criminal justice system with the education system um and and it, it's with with the employment system with with the way that society economy works so we have a lot of work to do after this when coming out of this but do you, but, but do you feel i mean you 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 got at the position of pps didn't you private parliamentary secretary and part of that job is to keep you know your minister in touch with backbench opinion i mean in in listening to other mps and so on because of the covid crisis because of black lives matters do you sense that there's a sort of real change of attitude going on i mean i sense it out there in the country i sense it on social networks but do you sense it that it's also happening in parliament Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. In my time, so being in, in, in the queue, uh, waiting for 46 minutes, a couple of times to vote, <laughs> um, I, you know, you get to speak to MPs from other, uh, other political parties. Um, and most MPs, I would say, from, you know, from Labour to Tory to Lib Dem to SNP uh, to Plyde, I think all are all experienced, are seeing the same sort of, um, they're getting the same casework through. Um, but seeing the same sort of issues uh, in their in their constituencies, um, so I think I mean it was quite disappointing. I mean, I, so it, it, yes, on one hand, yes, even my Tory colleagues, I would say, um, are seeing and feeling the same issues. Um, but whether they act on them is another matter, because as you saw from the, uh, the, the, the queuing that we had to do for the vote, you had a huge number of Conservative MPs who were making videos saying how awful it was, but went into the lobby and then voted for it. So I, I just, you know, my worry is, yes, people are seeing the inequalities in our society. Yes, they're seeing the, the tension, the sensitivities um, and the need out there in the community, whether they will act on it, whether, my, whether the Tory MPs will act on it. And ultimately, they are in government. Um, that's another uh, uh, question. Oh dear, the, the, the sins of party discipline, this I know. I mean, the, the, the sort of situation we're in now um, may become common. I mean, we may now be living in a time of perpetual crisis. We could have more pandemics because there's a lack of biodiversity. There's climate change, it's going to get worse and worse. Do you think that that's going to change things? People are going to realize and be more ready for that. And this crisis is partly prepared prepared us for that, including preparing MPs and the House of Commons? Um, yes, and I think this also, um, we, you know, we need to use this, sorry, we need to 
ensure that coming out of the crisis, um, we use this as an opportunity to do more to tackle uh, the cli climate change. Um, you've, you know, I've heard lots of colleagues and lots of organisations and charities talking about um, building, our, you know, building green, building sustainable. So it's about how do you, how do you get out of, um, the, get, get out of this um, the crisis? So with mass unemployment, with um, there's a lot you know the, the, uh, the way the, the shape of the economy will completely change and it's how do you use this as an opportunity opportunity to build better to build greener um and i think government missed an opportunity which other um some other european countries have adopted which is when you know they when you're bailing out when you're giving handing out public cash to major corporations major companies it's to attach a conditions to that to force for example i mentioned you know the one i've got on top of my mind is um aviation industry if you are going to support the aviation industry it's can you attach conditions to it if you're going to bail them out can you attach conditions to it so they do start using whether it's um, cleaner fuels, uh, better technology, changing, you know, reducing, changing the way they operate so they are having less impact on, uh, on the environment, but also looking at what kind of jobs we create going forward. We have, as you, you hear in the news every day, that thousands of people are losing their jobs. It's how do you know what are the, what is the industry? What are the industries that the government that, that you know? It's not the thirty two billion pounds that the government are putting into building roads, which isn't going to do anything good for the environment. So we need to think about um, how we create, how we build better, how we build greener, and how we use this as an opportunity to do more to improve. Uh, environment tackle climate change okay well we're getting sort of close to the end of going over our half hour but that's okay that's fine but just a couple more questions i mean how do you see your future life as an mp as a result of what we've been through now what i mean what i uh what i know for sure is that soon as the lockdown is uh, lifted i just want i want to spend time in enfield with 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 the organizations so i did i managed to go and visit um age uk in enfield and i did some deliveries but now that i'm going into parliament potentially coming into contact you know with 600 people who may or may not have covid so i've stopped doing the doorstep deliveries because i don't want to put anyone at risk um but i do miss i'm a very much a people's person and i like engaging and i want i like going to meetings i like meeting people and i want to do so that's the bit i am looking forward to doing more of um, I want to I want to be more on I want to be on the ground um, how do I see to, I have no idea to be honest with you Francis and um, what I do you know I, I think it's it's it, it's not it's there's a lot of work and it's not nice way environment to work um, the way we're having to work so I'm looking forward to having an office where people can come and speak to me when they need to um, I'm looking forward to being on the ground in Enfield myself. Um, and yeah, it's, and then let's see how it goes. I just hope this doesn't go on for too long. Well, I mean, you, you certainly like communicating and, you know, you absolutely uh, uh, put one of our admin people in awe because of your newsletter. He thinks it's very comprehensive and very, very thorough. So oh, you. you're, you're finding new ways of doing things, which is really important. So let me ask you the final question, which I ask everyone. If, every, if anyone wanted to find more about what you're doing and get in touch with you, how do they do that? They can call me. They can write to me. Um, they can contact, they can follow me on Twitter, which is Ferial, um, at Ferial Clark MP. They can find me on Facebook. So I regularly, I do a weekly update about what I'm doing, what, I, what issues I'm working on. And I put that on Twitter. I put that on Facebook. Um, you can, I've just um, finally got getting my website up. So I'll be putting information on there, but you can register for, to receive my weekly update, my newsletters. 
Um, but if you need to contact me about a person, about a casework, it's the best way to do it is to email me at burial.clark.mp at parliament.uk. And the email address is on my Twitter uh, uh, page as well. Um, but yeah, so at the moment, sadly, it's only via uh, web or phone at the moment. And we can arrange Zoom meetings if need be. Okay, uh, you may get a deluge of people asking for Zoom meetings now. Okay, well, thank, th thanks for doing this, uh, Ferial. I mean, it's been really interesting because, I mean, you not only told us about how you're coping with the COVID-19 crisis, but you've told people a little about, a bit about your work, and you still have the enthusiasm of a, of a new MP, and I, I hope you never lose that, because that's a very important thing to keep. So, you know, thank you for doing it and for taking your time, and I hope we do this again sometime later in the, in, in the year, if we can. Absolutely, my pleasure. I look forward to it. And, and to all the other amazing uh, organisations out there in Enfield as well, if you need to reach me, if you want me to come on your show, um, I, might, I'm, I might try. So there are lots of organisations doing fantastic work and I'm not, uh, I'm not managing to reach out to them at the moment, but post this, COVID, I will go out and I, you know, thank you very much to everyone in Enfield who have come together so well. It's been amazing. It's been really, really heartening the way that Enfield has, is, is working to support each other. And thank you so much, Francis, for giving me this opportunity as well. Okay, well, thank you. It's been an interesting, uh, you know, interview and I hope people do contact you. Well, I'm sure they will. Anyhow, uh, you know, we'll leave this now and then talk to you again another time. So let's, in, let's end this interview now. <laughs>